Charlie, congratulations, National Cup champions. Uh, I know you, you've just said unbelievable. I don't know how many times there, but what is it like? I don't even, I don't, I don't even spell unbelievable. Like. No, it, it's, it was, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, I said to John with 10 seconds to go, just laughing with him. I was like, Why? this is unreal. Why don't we do this every year? And he was just laughing. Right? It's, just, it's just a tremendous feeling that the work pays off. As I was just saying there, there's a, there's a lot of long nights and there's a lot of time, especially when you're young enough, you know, that like, you know, all your friends are moving abroad and they're moving this. And then like, you know, I have a girlfriend who lives in Dublin who has to sacrifice a load to allow me to play basketball and not even play, coach basketball. So all these things are kind of worth it after something like this. But you, you don't win it. It makes it very, very tough. But like, yeah, I might as well say it again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, describe what it was like. I was really impressed. Obviously, the start nine and zero. I just heard from Owen, but something that Aina have been credited with was their composure. They fought out really tough games going into this final, but that was something you were able to do as well today. Um, yeah, like we we just knew, like we analysed how they do that and what they do. Is they're so good at when teams go away from what, they, what gets them in front. You know, some guys, especially pros and stuff, they take it upon themselves. I'm going to hit the big shot, and we say we don't need you to hit the big shot until the big shot moment. So don't make you can't make a big shot moment. The moment arises, like when Jared took it. So like whenever we just say we, like if we get ahead, we got to stay the course, execute our plays, do it well. And so, like, a lot of times we didn't, but we said defensively we were really just going to put a foothold on it. I don't know what the final score was, but we, you know, keeping a team under 70 points in any game is going to put you in a really good position to win. Um, offense still wasn't done real, but like it's a cup final, it's all about how you get over the line. Something I was really impressed with as well, I was speaking about Emer Morchin, uh, you've switched up defensively, kind of in the, going into the second quarter, I think it was, to go to a zone. Yeah, that was it. Like, again, from your podcast, they said, you know, who's got to, have, have they got the cojones to stay in a zone for whatever? And sure, why would you leave it if it's helping you? It's working. Sean Jenkins came on and hit a big few big ones. But that guy, we thought, you know, he's been injured for a long time, so he probably won't be able, he's probably not going to be able to consistently do it. And he bloody well did. But uh, we just got contesting and we tried to contest every single shot. We tried to make it as best as possible. And uh, um, so we just try to make it as tough as possible. Like, that's all we can do. You know, like, you have to, if you get a contest on them, make them shoot a tough shot. And if they score, they score. Like that's that's the mantra. Like, but it does help them when you have the two big boys in the back, then just to sweep things up. I was saying to Owen, it was nearly like a battle on the court, but also a battle in the crowd. You were also instrumental in getting the crowd running. I but see, half the crowd are my friends, so it was very easy. You just turn to them and you just get them going. Like, like feels back to my. It was just something really special about it. I don't know what I can't describe. It, it was really special here in the fields back to my being right in there, and you look up and everybody is up. Like everybody. Is up. Like I was looking at, I, was, I, was, I call out my girlfriend. This, she's a quiet supporter usually, and I saw, saw her up saying, and I was laughing. And she was crying after. I was like, this is, this is scenes, like scenes upon scenes upon scenes. The crowd, yeah, I had to go and run into. I, I said to him five seconds ago, I was like, I have to do this. He goes, do it, and I ran straight for it. And then I just see in the front row these little kids, and like I'm not in the same, I'm not the same way I used to be when I played. I'm a lot heavier, so they wouldn't have been able to bear my brunt. <laughs> But it was just, oh, it was just class. This is just class. And Galway, like everyone back to Glynn's tomorrow. It's going to be unbelievable. The last team, the one in All Ireland with the hurlers, and it was, it was outrageous. And they, in fairness to them, they came up today and got us over that line. It was unreal. I think, yeah, our crowd, best crowd in Ireland. Uh, the guys were saying on the podcast as well, you're only 25, you used to be a big messer as well at all their camps. What's it like being a head coach now? Yeah, I'm calling up Puff Summers on that, right? What what the hell is that about? I was like, yes, I was 12 years old at his camp messing. Like, I'm, I obviously have matured a little bit, and I was always doing bits and pieces. And then, so I think he said, I think he said it was a bit. I thought it was a bit of a joke, Charlie becoming the coach. It's like, sorry, and this, and this isn't me trying to be cocky, but Puff, you haven't beaten me yet. So that's my shout out to Puff. If you're going to call out me for being a mentor. But um, no, as I said, I really like all the guys on that. Uh, I messed with them, but uh, yeah, they spurred me on to get it. So yeah, it's just, it's just a bit of crack. Puff, don't take this too seriously. You know, you know me, I'm only a messer. Last question, I don't want to take you away from the guys for too much longer, but what does this mean for Galway basketball as well with the girls earlier under 20 win? What, describe the current state and where Galway can now capitalise on the two wins today going forward. Yeah, um, that is a really deep question. Right, it's, 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 it's massive, I think, just the showing to be able to, like, we're on national TV, people get to see it, and you know, there's only limited opportunities you really get to really shove it down guys' throats. This is what basketball can be like. So then you're seeing guys there, they're all watching the game on TG Car, and they're like, right, you know what, we're, we're playing my Cullen now in, on Saturday, and you know, let's hope we arrive at the game on Saturday. But like, 
like, I think the crowds are going to see that and be like, do you know what? That was exciting. They just did that. All Ireland champions are coming to town. You know, they might come from a little bit further. Keep, keep coming. All that stuff. I think like underage, like our academy this year has already tripled. Like basketball Ireland are doing a really, really good job, but it's still really, really difficult financing wise and stuff like that. So until we get to a point where we can actually not waste finances, but use finances, you know, and just kind of throw not throw it away, but like throw it into. The, oh yes, um, um, like media and stuff like that. Like stuff that is essential to the running of basketball. Once we can put money towards that, it gets statisticians down to games. All these things are just going to improve, improve, improve. So we're getting there. I think that this way hopefully will help go away basketball and see. You know, it's that. Uh, you know our Galway League I think is made up of 10 teams and there's like, like 10 divisions in Dublin like we have 10 teams in the Galway League that's our biggest one so to be able to keep competing and just say you know there's a shot at this if you put in the work